I was in awe of my two closest school friends, Jonathan and Eric's intelligence, and couldn't think why they hung around with me, even though I was regarded as bright. I never had much intellectual self-confidence, but we all got scholarships to university. I went to Cambridge and Oliver went to Oxford. It was at that time, or a little bit later, then they discovered that he was gay. When I turned 18, my father thought this was the time for a serious father-to-son talk. We talked about allowances and money. And then my father got on to what was really worrying him. You don't seem to have many girlfriends, he said. Perhaps you prefer boys, he continued. Yes, I do, I said. It's just a feeling. I've never done anything. Then I added, but don't tell Ma. She won't be able to take it. But my father did tell her. And the next morning, she came down with a face of thunder, a face I had never seen before. You are an abomination, she said. I wish you had never been born. My mother was speaking, though I'm not sure I realized this at the time, out of anguish as much as accusation. The anguish of a mother who, feeling that she had lost one son to schizophrenia, now feared she was losing another to homosexuality. She did not speak to me for several days. When she did speak, there was no reference to what she had said nor did she ever refer to the matter again. But something had come between us. Her words haunted me for much of my life and played a major part in inhibiting and injecting with guilt my sense of my own sexuality.